Okay, guys. I apologize for the low light situation, but I am walking around the block as I always do nowadays in 2020, trying to do one to two miles a day of walking. And so the purpose of this video is to talk about DMR radio. And let's go ahead and fire this radio up. So, this radio is booting up, and I'm not going to talk specifically about this radio, but I got very interested in DMR recently. Again, sorry about the low light. You probably can't see me, but that's the nature of a handheld camera while you're walking. So, it's about 1.25 miles around the block. Sometimes if I go a different loop, it's two miles, but I'll do what I can. Try to stay in breath. But I want to talk about my new venture into DMR. And it is super complicated at first. Let me put it that way. What I want to do is provide a series of videos to both motivate you and help you get over that hump. <sighs> that hump. It's, it's uphill right now. That's why I'm out of breath. Very, very steep hill right now. <sighs> anyway, get you over that hump. Get you into DMR radio and tell you why it's so cool, why it's interesting, why you should use DMR radio. I'm even going to make a call up here and see if I can talk to anyone. All right, let's get to the top and then I'll talk again. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but the moon is over there. I've got my radio here. It's all programmed up. This is the TID DMR radio. Okay. If I'm out of breath, it's because I just climbed a giant hill. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so what I've been doing in January is walking. My goal is 50 miles in one month. That's about two miles a day. And the time I get is generally after everyone goes to bed at night. So you see me walking at night, and here I am. <laughs> Late at night, and I'm taking a walk. I'm in a pretty safe area, so I don't feel weird about it, but... I don't know what happened to that tree over there. Do you see it? But it's like not supposed to be horizontal like that. All right, so I got this radio and unfortunately I got a one band radio, 440. And I'm on the very and I'm at the top of a hill near me. So I should have very good contact here. And what I want to do for you guys in addition to getting my 2 miles today and my 50 miles in January walk is make a contact and tell you a little bit about digital radio. So before I head into the darkness, let me explain the way I understand DMR radio. So here I am with an HT. This is a common 5, 8 watt Chinese DMR H HT. Okay, so I went online and I looked up digital repeaters in my area and there is one Somewhere out there, I'm not sure exactly where, that's north, but there's a digital DMR repeater. And it, online it tells you everything you need to know to program this radio. So you put in the software, you, you go to the website, you type in all the channel stuff and the talk groups that you would talk to on your radio. You upload it to your radio and you're done, okay? Now that is for another video. I'm not going to talk about the details in this video. What I'm doing is telling you why I like DMR and I'm interested in it. Because the last two nights I've gone on a walk like this and I've just talked to somebody and there's way more than just your local repeaters because it's connected. So if I'm talking to a repeater over there, it's connected to the internet and it's talking worldwide. Okay? So it's not only your handheld and your repeater but it's also worldwide so there's a connection to literally I was talking to a guy from New Zealand last night New Zealand now I understand it's internet based and that's not real ham radio I get it but still it's pretty darn cool that I am able to walk around without a gigantic antenna and talk to people 
ham radio wise from all over the country whether it's New Zealand whether it's worldwide North America state based or local all of that is programmed into DMR they say there's some 1500 to 2000 channels all types of groups just listening alone on DMR is interesting can you see the moon over there that's what I started to think this is pretty interesting because there's a lot of activity out there now the downside is that it's complicated and I'm not gonna lie it's very frustrating or it can be very frustrating on my walk third night in a row that I have this radio and I'm gonna make sub subsequent videos I'm gonna tell you exactly how I set this up and better radios to buy the radios that I bought and why I like it it's the fact that you can talk to anyone worldwide without a gigantic antenna that makes me interested so let's start calling and see what happens okay let's see what happens now mind you it's like 11 o'clock at night I shouldn't even be walking by myself this is I know it's dark but it's dark I mean there's nothing I can do about it there's the moon up there all right so I have one repeater in my area that's digital well there's actually a couple and this radio is only 440 which is a mistake I should have bought a dual band radio so there's worldwide I'm gonna key up and you have to do that to sort of connect to the network so you key up to worldwide now I may not hear anything usually you don't hear a lot but I'm gonna put out a call let's go down to what I call each repeater has what are called talk groups and I'm gonna go to a talk group that I've talked on already called well listen to this this is called parrot so I think every repeater has a parrot signal so you can call into it and it will repeat exactly what you said now I know that's that's exists in analog as well I've heard about that but let's give it a try in digital right now here we go parrot N9YO calling parrot station testing and N9YO calling parrot All right, so it chopped me off a bit there. Let's try it again. N9YO calling parrot testing. N9YO calling parrot testing channel. Where are you? Let's see don't think that this isn't complicated and kind of flaky because it is All right, I'm going uphill again so I gotta I'm out of breath hang on let's try that one more time N9YO calling parrot testing parrot testing parrot I'm at the top of a hill so this should work pretty well N9YO calling parrot, testing parrot, testing parrot. Alright, so the value of that is that you know you're hitting the repeater, okay? So now I'm going to call STL St. Louis Metro. And it's late at night, so I don't know if anyone's going to come back. STL Metro is what it says. That's a specific talk group within the same repeater, okay? Let's give that a try. Don't worry about the details right now. I'll give you that later. But I'm going to give my call sign out and see if anyone's out there. And they're going to have to listen to me out of my breath. Out of breath. I can see Orion there, Sirius, the moon, which half of it's chopped off. It's a nice night for January, but here we go. N9YO listening on STL Metro listening and testing signal report please that's a good way to get a little response if you ask for a signal report people are usually nice enough to give you a report so again handheld 
to repeater to talk group and literally anyone that's connected to that talk group anywhere in the world can hear me but you have to be connected it's all kind of network based kind of complicated yes but very interesting and there's a lot more opportunity beyond just your local repeater so if that doesn't work I'm gonna move up to the S to the Missouri talk group so there's local regional private statewide nationwide worldwide there's all kinds of talk groups out there you just gotta kind of keep trying and that's what I've been doing is I just call and call and call until someone talks to me <sighs> oh well, Ryan Oh, oh, Ryan, you are my buddy. So you never know what you're going to get. One thing you do know you're going to get is some exercise. So Somewhere out there in that city of St. Charles is my repeater. Let's give another try. Midwest Regional. So now I'm going to call Midwest. You'd think somebody would be on there, but you don't know. It all depends on what network you're on. Again, complicated. I'm at the top of a hill. I can see a casino over there. And there's another casino over there. Okay, here we go. N9YO calling Midwest Regional. Testing and listening for signal report. Thank you. Okay, and finally, I'm going to go to Worldwide, where last night I was able to talk on a talk group to New Zealand. Let's see if anyone is out there Worldwide. And like I said, remember, it depends on what network you're on. It's so, if you think, well, maybe there's not many people out there, I have not fully explored the other networks. I'll put it that way. It's kind of cool. It's foggy out there. Here we go. Worldwide. Calling CQ. N9YO listening on Worldwide from Missouri looking for signal report N9YO listening Worldwide looking for signal report thank you talking slowly clearly listening for others I'm heading back uphill all these nice houses here in my neighborhood I live further away than this. But you'd think somebody worldwide would talk. Come on, let's go. Worldwide. In 9YL, send out two units. We meet again. New Zealand. Coming through loud and clear, Tom. Back to you. LTG, I think I'm back with New Zealand again this time. I am taking a YouTube video to try and teach and show people what you can do with a handheld and talking. Please give me your name and call sign again slowly and I'll try to catch it. Once again, I'm out of breath, climbing a hill. Thanks for coming again. My name here is Tom Tango Oscar Mike. <sighs> Help me get his name. It's so loud. This is Giovanni. Giovanni. Uh, I'm, I'm from the North New Zealand and you're coming through loud and clear here. It's about 6 p.m. in the evening on a blue sunny day. Back to you. <laughs> LPG Giovanni in New Zealand, 6 p.m. on a sunny, clear day. And here it's about 11 p.m. and I can see Taurus, the constellation, the Seven Sisters, Orion, Sirius. And I think those are not available to you at night, uh, being in the Southern Hemisphere. Am I right? Um, thanks for coming back. Whew, out of breath. Climbing the hill. I will put a video out there and let everyone know, and you too, if I know your call sign, I can send it to you. And thanks for coming back. So, for some reason he did not come back, and that's not atypical that's not abnormal sometimes people don't come back and I don't get it but 
sorry for being out of breath, man, but seriously, it's a hundred foot from that up to here, and I'm climbing, so I'm doing the best I can. Okay, November 9, Yankee Oscar here, and last night you told me that this network had very little activity, and I appreciate you coming back. Giovanni from New Zealand. Someday I hope to go there. Someday I hope to see the beautiful country of New Zealand. Right now I'm in mid-America where tornadoes are just starting to uh, drum up, especially in the next coming months. I don't hate tornadoes. I kind of like them. I go chase them a little bit. But what kind of severe weather do you have there if you are there, Giovanni? This is why DMR is so cool, because given I have a good connection, given I had a good radio, you can talk to so many people. Last night, Giovanni from... Pretty strong winds, it was up to about 90 or 80, 90 mile an hour gusting a few days ago. That's quite unusual. Well, it's summer anyway, although it's fairly variable. We tend to get a lot of unstable weather until about February and then it really settles down. So although it's summer, like last night it was 5 degrees Celsius, which is probably about 38 to 40 degrees, something like that, in the middle of summer, so it's quite cold. Um, not a huge amount of weather. Most, most of the country does not get tornadoes or anything like that. Thank you, N9YL, I think, said LPGX. Interesting. Very interesting to hear about your weather and those strong winds, which just kind of sometimes just blow up and then go away. But that's what's interesting about living in different areas. Here in mid-America, mid we are prone to tornadoes. It has to do with the Gulf of Mexico, the heat coming up from the south, and the cold mixing with the Rocky Mountains of the west. They come together and converge and create these fronts that come through and make our weather very cold and very hot over and over and over and then they spin the air and that's what causes tornadoes and there's lots of videos online which very interesting tornadoes are very interesting if you ever go and actually look for a tornado you realize how hard they are to find everyone's afraid of them of course but actually trying to even find one to see one I've never in my life seen one I've lived here my whole life they're very hard to find but all of a sudden there they are Anyway, uh, are you near the ocean or not? Curious, I'm in mid-America, not even anywhere near the ocean. Probably an uh, eight hour drive just to get to the ocean. And that's not an option. Uh, Roger, Tom. Um, I'm about 40 minutes from the coast. You know, most of New Zealand, but just about anywhere in New Zealand, you're within a bit, about three hours of the uh, drive of the coast. Um, New Zealand's shape not dissimilarly to Britain in terms of the length and the width. So, uh, yeah, it's a very different weather we have here. It's uh, sort of really dominated by the coast. In the, the middle of the North Island, it does snow and gets quite high, and so it snows in winter. And in the South Island, it's, yeah, it's close to the Antarctic, so of course it's uh, pretty cold there in winter as well. Uh, gentle breeze, just watching my antenna drift by the HF one, which is an inverted L. Tom, could you con um, just confirm your call, please? I have it as N N9 Yankee Lima, is that correct? Back to you, said LPGX listening. Okay, name here is Tom Tango Oscar Mike, November. Nine, Yankee Oscar, N9, Y-O, Yellow Ocean, N9, Yankee Oscar. And please send your call sign again. I am walking with a camera pointed at my face, and I'm trying to uh, educate people on, on uh, DMR, and they will find my channel, they will find this very interesting, just as I do. Just learning about your weather and, you know, anything about New Zealand is very interesting. All I know about it is they shot the movie The Lord of the Hobbits, the Lord of the Rings there and The Hobbit there and all that stuff, which of course made me want to go there. They, they went there for a reason because it was the least tainted place in the entire uh, world. That, that's what we heard anyway. Tainted by things like uh, power lines and things like that. 
Anyway, Giovanni, uh, please send your call sign again. Email me or something. And I am heading down the hill, so I'm probably not going to be able to hit the repeater again as I come back to my house on my two-mile walk, or 2.4-kilometer walk, roughly. Anyway, 7-3, and I will listen to you on your final. Thanks for coming back. That's so cool. That's what I'm talking about. Now, to be fair, he's the same guy that came back to me last night. And last night, a couple other guys came in. Um, but tonight, it didn't. But, I mean, here I am walking. I'm walking and talking to somebody in New Zealand. How cool is that? Very nice guy, by the way. Hope he watches my video. And because I want him to see how interesting and nice it was for him to have given me somebody to talk to. Because, you know, you think worldwide, you think there'd be so many more people out there. But as he was saying last night, this particular network that I'm on is not that busy. Which is why this is complicated. But it's not also. Anyway, I'm almost home. I'm reaching about two miles because I got my GPS watch on. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this. There will be more to come on DMR because I'm very interested in it. And it's very cool. And I made a new friend in freaking New Zealand. How cool is that? Good night, Orion. Good night, Moon. Good night, Sirius.